Good morning, everyone. Um, I wanted to start this video off on a positive note. And I wanted to say thank you. Thank you to everyone that's been supporting me over the last six months and the message that I've been putting forward. I know at times it's been rather confusing um, and even more divisive. So thank you for not blocking me um, and putting up with, I guess, some of the crazy side effects of all of this. Of asking questions. Um, so last night we entered the summer solstice um, with Jupiter and Saturn aligning um, in a once in a lifetime event and with that was a, a global meditation uh, which was focused on Uluru. Um, it was beautiful, I took part in it, um, but what I didn't find to be quite beautiful was the way that the traditional landowners, the caretakers of Uluru, um, had great concerns for a conference that was taking place in Uluru. And uh, none of the leaders in the freedom movement listened to any of these concerns at all. Um, so I would like to know how much money was made at this conference and why people ignored those concerns. Um, that leads into the sovereign debate of the people that went there, um, what connections do they have with the sovereign movement? Um, so why were they going there and causing trouble? And then you can start to think a little bit down the line of conspiracies. And that's how th things start really, is if you don't get your um, questions answered, you start to think about things. And so there was a plane with 200 people from Sydney and that got, um, that got stopped at the airport and caused even more problems. So you wonder, was that even part of the plan? I'm sure it's not, but it's just a little example of, of how um, things start to go down different rabbit holes when you don't get answers from anyone. Um, so when I speak about the sovereign movement and I speak about conferences, I, I automatically think about scams as well. Uh, we know that in the last year now, this movement has turned quite quickly into an industry, a marketplace, filled with little uh, endeavors, projects. And um, I find that quite concerning. I, I don't find that to be a grassroots movement and the way it's all taking place with the different networks behind the scenes that I've been investigating um, is a worry. Um, you have a look at the protests that are taking place at the moment um, and I really wanna see unity and right now I'm seeing division, whether it's the Invasion Day protest or whether it's, um, whether it's people sitting in parks, um, walking to beaches, they're not getting out on the streets. Um, and they're not uniting with the people that we're meant to be uniting with, and that's the majority. And that's the problem with this message, I believe, is that we're not speaking to the majority. Um, and I wonder why that is. Um, and when I look into things a lot more, I see a network that's been in place for a very long time. And I, I see a, a globalist agenda. I, I can straight out say there's, there's, there's globalist infiltration in this movement and it's, it's, a, it's a range of layers. And I don't even think a, a lot of you guys even understand how much. And, and to think that this movement's only been around for 12 months and all of these things are taking place. Um, yeah, I might sound divisive talking about this stuff. Um, but so be it, because, because I only really want true unity and I only want to see genuine people try and make a difference in this country and that's something that I feel like we're not seeing enough of. Um, all of these different people, they talk about unity, but really there's treachery going on everywhere. Um, you know, even if they're starting up little platforms um, to take our money, they're all doing it separately. They can't even unite on that. Um, and that concerns me. There's, there's so many, there's so many things we could go into on, on that. I'll calm down for a sec. I'm sorry, guys. No, I'm not sorry, actually. Um, so I've raised concerns about this movement um, and the message of division and extremism under this brand of freedom for about six months now. And in that time, I believe things have only gotten worse. Um, if we want to put a stop to what's taking place, um, this enforced in vac vaccination, we really need to to really unite and have a message that we can put out to the people. 
Um, but right now I'm here an extremist message that's only going to take us down the road of being labelled a domestic terrorist organisation. Um, a little while back I put up a post and it showed that close to 50% of AGO's budget is, is on an organisation like this. Um, and that's patriots, that's right wing extremists. And I know a lot of you, most of you don't think that, that that's, that's you at all, but I'm telling you now, that's part of the plan. We're going to be labelled extremists so they can silence our voice. Um, and that's very, very worrying for that to take place. And all the while, real cases are taking place around us, child abuse cases. I've been, because I've been speaking out and, and asking these questions, a lot of people have come to me and, and they've spoken to me about the things that they've experienced in this world. And, and um, there, is, there is some serious things that should be being investigated, real, real pedophile rings that, that I believe these people have really uncovered something, but yet we're talking about constantly signing a petition to try and get the government to, to unseal the pedophile suppression orders. We have much better chance trying to investigate and researching that and, and getting that ourselves. Yeah, we continue to do that, but really we've got to start looking around us because people are screaming out for help because really some of these things are, are distractions. Um, so when you look at people like Karen Brewer and especially Lizzie Rose that are speaking these messages of extremism, straight up extremism, whether it's Karen Brewer saying that we should uh, get arrested so we can map out the police stations because we'll need them, or Lizzie Rose saying that she has footage of, of dead babies. Um, yeah, we can believe that there's children and pedophile rings under the cities of under the city of Melbourne, but Lizzie Rose says that she's filmed this, that she's got this footage, and if that's the truth, and she's not releasing this or making this public, that means the children are dying if, if she believes this. So are children dying on her watch or is she using this to emotionally manipulate her audience? And I'm seeing, an, I'm seeing emotional manipulation happening all across the board. Um, and I don't want to be talking about this stuff. I, I want to be talking about solutions um, because we don't have much time left. And that's what freaked me out. And, and I've been abrasive in asking questions of people for for months now because well when you go into something and you get silenced and you find out the pe people are speaking with the police and collaborating them with them every day and that's the very first part that you jump into this trying to understand this movement well you're going to start asking more and more questions and uh, that's what I've done and I've got a lot of lot of questions and, and little answers so far um, so that brings me to the next point is I'm going to be doing a podcast it's called Problems and Solutions with uh, David Stills, who I had a lot of concerns about at one point and I still have, still have a number of concerns about him. But um, I, believe, I believe that he's genuine and not only that, I believe that he's willing